What are you doing here? Before Sherlock and John were allowed inside Lauriston Gardens, they had to get past Sergeant Sally Donovan. She looked at Sherlock with obvious dislike. The text that he had sent to the press the day before were just one of the many reasons why she did not like Sherlock Holmes. I'm here to see Detective Inspector Lestrade, Sherlock told her. Why? I was invited. I think he wants me to help the investigation, said Sherlock. Donovan gave him an unfriendly smile. Well, you know what I think, don't you? She pointed at Watson, who was listening to this conversation carefully. Who's this? He works with me, answered Sherlock. Donovan just laughed. How did you find anyone who would work with you? As she let the two men pass the police tape, Donovan spoke into her radio. It's him, she said. He's coming in. Inside Lauriston Gardens, Sherlock found Lestrade getting ready to investigate the crime scene. He's with me, Sherlock said, pointing to John before Lestrade could ask any questions. So, where do we need to go? Upstairs, said Lestrade. Like many of the big old houses in the area, Lauriston Gardens was going to be flats. The work was not yet finished, and all of the flats were still empty and unfinished. As the three men went up to the top floor, Lestrade told Sherlock, I can give you two minutes with the body. John felt sure that this was probably against police rules. I may need more time, said Sherlock calmly. The woman's name is Jennifer Wilson, Lestrade told him. We got that from her credit cards. She hasn't been here long. Some kids found her. They had reached the flat on the top floor now. At the sight of Jennifer Wilson's body lying face down on the floor, Lestrade stopped talking. Even John, who had seen many dead bodies in his professional life, still found it hard to get used to the sight. It was difficult to know the woman's age at first because they couldn't see her face. One thing was certain. She had been a woman who cared about her appearance. Her coat and shoes were all exactly the same colour. Pink. Even her umbrella was pink. Sherlock didn't move at first. He stared down at the body. John knew that Sherlock was able to understand much more than he or Lestrade ever could. Shut up! Sherlock shouted suddenly, looking angrily at Lestrade. I didn't say anything, said Lestrade. You were thinking, said Sherlock. It's annoying. Slowly, Sherlock moved closer to the body. A single word was written on the wooden floor next to her left hand. As she lay dying, the woman must have scratched this word into the floor. The pink fingernails on her left hand were broken and dirty. It had clearly been important to her to write this last message to the world. R-A-C-H-E Sherlock bent down and examined the body more closely. Using rubber gloves, he checked her coat. First the outside of it, then under the collar... Next, he looked at the umbrella that had been in one pocket. After that, he started looking at the woman's gold jewellery, carefully checking how clean and shiny each piece of jewellery was. He took the wedding ring from the third finger of her left hand and examined this closely. The inside of the ring looked new and shiny, the outside of the ring did not look as if it had been cleaned for a long time. While Sherlock was examining the body, John and Lestrade just stood and watched. At last, Lestrade spoke. Got anything? Sherlock stood. Not much, he said. Well, she's German, said a man in the doorway. He too was wearing the special blue suit worn by people examining a crime scene. This was Anderson, 
and it was obvious that he disliked Sherlock Holmes even more than Sergeant Donovan did. John was beginning to realise that Sherlock was the sort of man who did not make friends easily. Racker is a German word, Anderson started to explain. She could be trying to tell us something in German. Before Anderson could explain his ideas any further, Sherlock crossed the room quickly and closed the door in his face, saying, Yes, thank you for your help. Lestrade looked down at the body. So, she's German, he asked. Of course not, said Sherlock. He had his mobile phone in his hand and was using it to check the weather in the UK that day. She isn't from this area, though, Sherlock went on. She intended to stay in London for one night before returning home to Cardiff. That much is obvious. Obvious, said John. He was learning that it wasn't easy to keep up with Sherlock. The detective turned to him now. John, you're a doctor. Tell me what you think of the body. Lestrade wasn't so sure about this. That's a job for the police team outside, he said. I'm already breaking every rule by letting you in here. That's because you need me, said Sherlock. Lestrade knew that this was true. Oh, just do as he says, he told John, and left the room. Moments later, they could hear his voice outside saying, Anderson, keep everybody out for a couple of minutes. Sherlock looked at John. Well? What am I doing here? John asked. I'm supposed to be helping you to pay the rent. Well, this is more fun, said the detective. Fun, said John. There's a woman lying dead in front of us. Sherlock nodded. Perfectly true. But I was hoping you might provide a little more information than that. John bent and began to examine the body. Hmm, can't smell any alcohol on her, he said. You know what it was, said Sherlock. You've read the newspapers. So she was one of the suicides, the fourth one. The door opened. That was your two minutes, Detective Inspector Lestrade told Sherlock. I need any information that you've got. Sherlock told him. A woman in her late thirties, a professional person. She travelled from Cardiff today, intending to stay in London for one night. That's obvious from the size of her suitcase. Suitcase? said Lestrade, confused. There was no suitcase anywhere near the body. Suitcase, yes, said Sherlock. She's married for over ten years, but not happily. She's had other men friends, and none of them knew that she was married. Lestrade had heard enough. How could anyone, even Sherlock, possibly know all this? Listen, if you're just saying anything that comes into your head... Sherlock went back to the body. Look at her wedding ring, he said. It must be ten years old or more. All of her other jewellery has been cleaned regularly, but not the wedding ring. The only clean part is the inside. That means that she took it off her finger regularly. She didn't work with her hands, just look at her perfect fingernails. So why did she remove her wedding ring? Or who did she remove it for? A man who was not her husband. John could not hide his opinion of Sherlock's amazing skills as a detective. It's brilliant, he said. And Cardiff? asked Lestrade. It's obvious, isn't it? replied Sherlock. It's not obvious to me, said John. The look on Lestrade's face showed that it wasn't obvious to him either. Sherlock shook his head sadly. What could it be like inside your funny little heads? It must be so boring. 
Look, her coat is a little wet. She was in heavy rain in the last few hours, but it hasn't rained in London all day. It's wet under her collar too, but her umbrella is dry. That means that she turned her collar up against the rain and the wind, but it was too windy for her to use her umbrella. We know that she didn't travel far because her suitcase was small. So, where has there been heavy rain and strong wind within a travel time of two to three hours from London? He showed them his mobile phone, which still showed the weather for the country. Cardiff, he said. Something was troubling Lestrade. Why do you keep talking about her suitcase? Yes, said Sherlock. Where is it? We need to find out who Rachel is. So she was trying to write Rachel on the floor, asked Lestrade. Well, she wasn't leaving a note in German. Of course she was writing Rachel. The question is, why did she wait until she was dying to write it? So how do you know that she had a suitcase? asked Lestrade. Sherlock pointed down at the back of the dead woman's legs. Look at the marks on the back of her right leg. Those come from pulling a suitcase with wheels in the rain. It's clear from the marks that the case wasn't very big, so we know that she was only coming for one night. Now where is that suitcase? There wasn't a suitcase, said Lestrade. There never was a suitcase. Sherlock couldn't believe it. He ran to the door and shouted to the other police officers in the house. Suitcase? Did anyone find a suitcase in this house? There was no suitcase, repeated Lestrade. Sherlock started down the stairs, clearly in a hurry. They take the poison themselves, he said urgently. They chew and eat the pills. There are clear signs. Even you couldn't miss them. Lestrade stood at the top of the stairs with John. What are you trying to say? It's murder, said Sherlock. All the deaths. I don't know how, but they're not suicides. They're murders. We've got ourselves a killer. Oh, how I love these cases. There's always something to look forward to. Sherlock stopped and looked back up the stairs. Her suitcase. If it wasn't in the house, the killer must have driven her here and forgotten that the case was in the car. His mind was racing, and now another thought came to it. His eyes flashed wildly. Oh, oh! He clapped his hands as he had a sudden idea. Sherlock? asked John, worried. With killers like this, you always have to wait for them to make a mistake, said Sherlock. We can't just wait, said Lestrade impatiently. Sometimes Sherlock just didn't understand, he thought to himself. What would the press say if they heard that there was a murderer in the city? Oh, we've finished waiting, said Sherlock. Look at the body. Really look. The killer has already made his mistake. He turned and continued down the stairs. Call the police in Cardiff, he called over his shoulder. Find out who Jennifer Wilson's family and friends were. Find Rachel. Yeah, of course, said Lestrade. But what mistake has the killer made? In answer, Sherlock shouted just one word. Pink! And then he had gone. 